Hey everyone, I'm Konstantin and I want to give you a quick overview of the script Workflower. If you want to go straight into learning more in depth about Workflower, you can also skip this tutorial as I will be teaching everything from scratch in the other tutorials. Still, if you want to get a basic overview of the functions and or just a very quick start on how to use Workflower, this tutorial is for you. So after you installed Workflower into the scripts folder and you then launched it and followed the dialogues to install the shortcuts, you're ready to go. So without further ado, what can you do with Workflower? So we have the shot here from the short Noctuidea by Alexandra Mauritz where we look through this window and I added this glass. And as you can see, my comp is kind of messy. I try to keep it as organized as possible, but in After Effects, especially when you work on more complex shots, it can get a bit difficult to stay organized. So using Workflower, you can now create groups within your composition. So I can select these layers here, for example, and they're, you know, kind of the border. And now I want to group those layers. So I can come up with the menu of Workflower. This is the menu of Workflower. And now I can click on Create Group. And I can call this border. And now, as you can see, we have created this group here. There are some indent, there are some label coloring. And now I can continue on. These layers here, they are kind of the main action. So I can hit create group, but this time I'm just using the shortcut. And this is the cool thing about Workflower. Pretty much every function can be executed with a shortcut. From now on, I will just show you all the functions by using the shortcuts, just to show you how quickly you can work with Workflower. So I'm calling this main, and I can continue on, call this background. And you can not only create groups, but you can also create groups within groups. So these here are kind of in front of the glass. And those here are kind of the reflection and I can just relabel all these groups. So for example, with this group, I can come up with this relabeling tool and click on a color I rather want to have. And then also for this one here as well. And I can also just collapse the group or expand the group again. And I can also collapse the higher group here and expand it again. And now it will remember which group has been closed and which has been opened. I can also just collapse all groups and then let's say, okay, I just want to work on the border. And now I have a much cleaner experience of browsing through my project. You can also just grab your layers and I want to move them out of this group back into the main group. For this, I need a refresh function that I can execute like this. And now they're in the main group. And I can also just move them back up here and now they're back into the in front of glass group. I can also just select a group and now move that around. One thing that is important though is that you really have to use the select group function because if you would just select these layers here individually it wouldn't work because if you look at the shied layers you see that every group has this header and this footer and these need to be selected as well. You can also very easily just disable the entire group and enable it again. And as you see, all the visibility states will be remembered. Also, you can just solo the group, just work on that and then unsolo it again. I can also very easily just parent all my layers to the group header. Now with one shortcut, they're just parented and I can move the border around. Another cool function of Workflower is that you can clone layers. So I have this example here of this ship floating into the glowing moon. And what I want to do is create a light wrap for it. So generally what you would have to do is pre-comp the background and the foreground and then create the light wrap onto that. However, in this case, we also have a camera that's parented to a null. So I would have to copy that into both pre-comps and let's say I want to add a new null to it and parent that, then I also have to copy that into all of these comps again. And uh, so it can get somewhat messy. So what you can do with Workflow now is you can go to the background group here, for example, and you can clone and pre-comp this group. I don't want the prime clone. I'll show you later what a prime clone actually does. And now all of these layers are being cloned. 
And now what we have here is a pre-comp with all of the layers that were in this group, as well as the camera and the null it is parented to. And this goes for all layers as well. So if there is a parent to a layer, it will also be copied with its entire parent structure to this clone comp. And all of these layers are linked by expression. Since they're linked by expression, I can now, you know, just change up the position of the moon, for example and it will you know, update on that clone automatically. Let's say I want to add an effect, for example, and I crank this up. Of course, nothing is visible because within the clone comp on this specific layer, there is no effect on it since adding an effect cannot be linked by an expression. But there is also a function for that, which is called refresh connections. However, this is a different refresh than the refresh layout we already saw in the groups tutorial. And now the clone has been refreshed and the rough and edges effect has been added. However, I don't want that, so I'm going to delete it and refresh connections again. And now I want to clone the ship and the wave. So I can select my ship and I can select the wave layers I want to clone. And now we have a clone comp only of the ship and the wave. And you can also very easily add and remove layers from your clone just by going to the effects here and then duplicating one of these effects and then maybe selecting the moon for example then hit refresh connections again and now we have added this moon to this clone we can also remove it of course and this group clone i now want to duplicate and i have to remove these effects here in order to make it dependent on the original clone comp so when i execute refresh connections on it no unique clone will be created all right now let's move it up here and now I can just rename it and there's also a special renamer which also has some advanced options. And now I'm just going to create the basic setup for Lightwrap. I'm going to reference the clone of the ship that we just created as our mat for it. And now we have very quickly created a Lightwrap. And the cool thing is since, you know, like you saw, everything is linked by expression. I can just move this moon around, for example, and the Lightwrap will react to that automatically. So here we have this other example of this, well, certainly not award-winning shot as of now, but I think it's kind of functional for what I want to show you here. With this, I want to show you a different kind of clone, a so-called prime clone. So I have these two shadows here, and I basically want to create a displacement map. So they're kind of displaced like the stage here. To do that, there is a different kind of clone. But first, let's just come up to the stage group here. I want to just create a general precom clone. So I don't want a prime clone in this case because I'm just creating with the reference for the displacement map. I'm going to add some curves here to get more detail from the stage to make it easier to displace it. And now add a little bit of blur to it. I'm just going to keep it disabled. And now I'm going to grab my two shadows here and create a clone. And I want the prime clone enabled this time. And as you can see, there is this dot in front of this layer. This means it is contained within a prime clone. And this shadow base layer here is already contained within this clone because it's even indenting further. If we look at the opacity of these layers, we see that the prime clone layer itself is at 100% opacity and the layers themselves are not visible. And the opacity that is within the clone can be seen here on this opacity slider. I can change that up. The cool thing is now I can just create a displacement map here and use the stage group clone as the basis for the displacement. And the cool thing is that I can still move these shadows around and see their displacement live updating in the higher clone. I could even select this clone layer here and then create another prime clone out of that. And now this is even indenting further. So you can see the logical structure of your prime clones with that. And you can stack your prime clones on top of each other and on top of each other. You know, there is no limit to that. Other cool functions of workflow are its matting functions. Just select your layer and then hit create mat. And now I have very quickly created a mat to the layer and I can just mat it here. And I can also just select a group and hit create mat. And now I'm creating a group mat. And I can now mat all of the contained layers. And the cool thing, the mat we already created still exists. And I can also move it around. And if you look at the track mat here, 
you see that the original mat and the group mat both have been added here. And I can even create new mats to it. And now another mat has been created here. And I can even go in there and maybe change the blending mode of this mat here. For more information on how this mud merge actually works, I would just refer to my in-depth tutorial on creating and merging mats. So I have this example here of this woman walking and I added these bushes that are tracked into the shot by the 3D camera track. But now I want to color correct them because they're not really fitting in. So it would be just really nice just to create an adjustment layer and add curves to it. However, now I'm also affecting the background, of course. So what you can do now is just select the layers you want to apply this adjustment layer to, then hit create linked adjustment layer and I can just rename that to bushes very quickly and now add like a curves effect. Hit refresh connections and now this only applies to all the selected layers and I can even add another effect here and change up that and I can even deactivate and activate them. Also I can switch up the opacity if I want to and you can also add and remove layers as you would with a clone by just grabbing this effect here, duplicating it or removing it. And then of course you would have to hit refresh connections to apply it. Also I can even add more adjustment layers to it. So in this case these bushes here in front when the lens flare gets bigger as compared to the one in the back they will have to be brighter. I can just select these three layers in front of you, create a linked adjustment layer, call it front. And I can add curves only to that and then just color correct them. All right, maybe animate this here. All right, certainly doesn't work perfectly like that, but you know, you kind of get the point. All right, this was kind of the basic overview of the most relevant functions of Workflow. There are much, much more. So please check out all the other tutorials where I go way much more in depth. Thank you very much for listening and I hope I see you in one of the other tutorials for Workflow.